Hi, it's Dr. Fox, and let's talk about empathy deficit disorder. First and foremost, this is not an official disorder. This is something that people may call a disorder, but it's more of a colloquial use of the term. And they're usually describing somebody with a lack of empathy. Now, lack of empathy is a criteria for a lot of different disorders. For example, antisocial personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder and borderline personality disorder. So those are kind of the big three where we see people applying this colloquial disorder, empathy deficit disorder, or lack of empathy. Now let's talk about each of those real quick. So when we talk about antisocial personality disorder, when we look at antisocial personality disorder, we're looking at sort of like a broad term for people that are reckless, remorseless, take advantage of others, manipulative, destructive in their own life, but also take advantage of others. Now, a lot of times, these individuals have what I call a core content. Now, core content is something all of us have. It can be positive, it can be negative, but that core content is what is inside of. It could be power and profit, like it is for most individuals along the antisocial spectrum. It could be shame, fear, doubt, inferiority, guilt for individuals along the narcissistic spectrum. Or it could be abandonment, rejection sensitivity, or emptiness for those along the borderline personality disorder spectrum. Now, when we talk about that lack of empathy, what it is, it is a byproduct or it is a surface structure of core content. Now, in my therapy, I'm always trying to identify core content in my clients. And what we do is in doing that, it gives us an insight into how they function. Now let's go back to antisocial personality disorder. Now antisocial personality disorder, typically that core content is power and profit. And they don't really have this sense of remorse, this sense of empathy when they take advantage of other people, when they put people in situations that are really painful and really destructive, typically, when they do that, they put people in those situations and then when the negativity falls on them or when they fall apart, destroy their life or whatever it may be, the individual with antisocial personality disorder usually benefits from that. And that's really important because they get the power, they get the profit. And that's your antisocial. So that lack of empathy, that empathy deficit disorder, that what happens is, is that again, they don't have that sense of connection to that person. Now, underneath that antisocial personality disorder, we have sociopathy and psychopathy. Now, sociopathy is, it's a clinical term, but it's not in the Diagnostic Statistical Manual. And it is subsumed under the more broader term of antisocial personality disorder, but sociopathy or your sociopaths are really, really good at socially engaging others, but they also have that lack of empathy. Now, if we go to the extreme end, the far, far end of the antisocial spectrum, then we have psychopathy. And the clinical term or the clinical usage of the term psychopathy involves an individual that absolutely has an intensive high degree of lack of empathy. They feel very little regret over what they do, or actually, I'll take that back, they have no regret over what they do, they have no sense of remorse, no sense of loss, no sense of distance, and a lot of times, and they're exceptionally rare, so it's not like, oh, psychopaths are everywhere. Genuine clinical psychopaths are very, very rare. I, I do have videos where I've talked about that. I'll, I'll put a link here if you're interested in learning more. And because of that lack of empathy, that emotional deficit or the empathy deficit disorder, right? Which we've got to put in quotes because it's not a real disorder. But we see that with your psychopath, that they'll really be harmful, violent, destructive, conniving. Now they're not all brilliant. They're not all Hannibal Lecters. Don't believe that. They tend to have average intelligence and they're also, in many, in many cases, patient. Now, there can be a degree of impulsivity, but what's interesting is when we see that impulsivity engaged, a lot of times the psychopaths and the individuals that I have met that have been clinical psychopaths, they wait 
they wait or they set up conditions where the identified object, the victim, then gets into that situation and then they impulsively engage. I think a really good uh, example is that movie American Psycho. And that really, I mean, it really illustrates quite well what a genuine psychopath looks like. So let's jump a little bit. Let's get into the narcissistic lack of empathy portion here. And in individuals along the narcissistic spectrum, a lot of times when they have that lack of empathy, it's not due to the biological or neurological deficit that we see in research has shown this in individuals that are psychopaths, actual psychopaths. So your narcissist, what's interesting, there's all kinds of fascinating research. It's very, very fascinating. But that we see that narcissists can utilize empathy if they choose to, but a lot of times they don't because they don't feel like it's worth it. They don't feel like, why? I mean, emotions have no value anyway. So what do I care what happens to you? As long as my narcissism is fed, then we're okay. Because if it's not, then that's where the problem comes in. And depending upon the severity of the narcissist, which is, it could be mild, moderate, severe, or extreme, and if they qualify for full narcissistic personality disorder, and they have that lack of empathy, they could engage that part of their brain, they could utilize empathy, but they just don't, don't see the need for it. It's not important enough to them to utilize it. Now, when we talk about individuals along the borderline personality disorder spectrum, and when we say lack of empathy, a lot of times actually it's a very different perspective than the other two. Because what happens is that individuals along the BPD or borderline spectrum, that lack of empathy is typically what other individuals perceive. Meaning that when the individual with BPD behaves in an erratic way, in a chaotic way, sometimes even an aggressive or violent way, that those individuals that are around that person or in that person's same social circle, that they feel like, oh, they don't care anything about what's going on. But in reality, and I can tell you that since I've been working with individuals over 20 years along the BPD spectrum, I've never had an individual, as long as they don't have antisocial traits or narcissistic traits that are pretty, pretty intensive. So if, if those two factors aren't there, I can tell you that those individuals with BPD feel immense regret, immense remorse, so much so that they use it against themselves to justify self-harm, suicidal gestures, isolation, and it encourages depression, anxiety, in some cases, um, if, if there was trauma associated with it, and they turn it on themselves. So it's very interesting that a lot of folks say, oh, they have no empathy, but it's really a misunderstanding. And as long as those two factors, remember, that antisocial traits or disorder is not there, and the narcissistic traits and the disorder is not there, when those are gone, the individual actually intensely feels regret, remorse. And that abandonment fear, the rejection sensitivity, and the emptiness really, really comes out from their behaviors. So sometimes it's misconstrued about the empathy deficit disorder. So I'd love to hear your comments. If you know somebody that you think has a lack of empathy, empathy deficit disorder, not a real disorder, right? We're putting the quotes around. Then please leave a comment. Let us know. I try to check those as often as I can. I try to respond to everybody if I can. And I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.